Hey there guitar players, it's Anthony here at Cutting Edge Guitar welcoming you to another lesson on 7th chords and arpeggios following on from the previous lessons that I've done for you here on YouTube. In today's lesson we're going to be talking about this chord which is the minor 7 flat 5 chord. So let's get right into looking at how you do this. Here is the voicing, close up. So what we're going to do is basically, like we've talked about previously, where we've had our minor 7 chord that looks like this, exactly as the name of the chord suggests, we're going to take that minor 7 chord and we're going to flatten the 5th, which we would find, uh, I'm talking about the 5th interval here, which we would find on the B string. We're going to bring that down a semitone. So the voicing that we're going to play, we're going to play E5 with the 2nd finger. We're going to play D5 with the 3rd finger. We're going to play G5 with the 4th finger. And then finally we're going to play uh, B4 with the first finger. Now if you're listening to that chord going, why on earth would I want to learn to play that or where would I use it because it sounds bloody awful. Well on its own, yes, these chords, they don't sound particularly pleasant. But if I put this into a musical context for you. actually have a really really cool function so they work really really nicely as a part of a minor 251 that's what I was just playing there in the key of G uh, but there's lots of other places where you could use a chord like this as well so on its own it doesn't sound great but as a part of a functioning chord progression it sounds really really good so that is the shape in position one in the key of A if we talk about the arpeggio now that will come out like this So here's how you would play it. We're going to play 5-8 on the 6th string. We're then going to play the 6th fret on the A string. We're going to play 5-7 on our D string. We're then going to play 5-8 on the B string. We'll roll that 4th finger through. There's other ways to do it, but I always do it with that roll. So we're going to go to the 8th fret on the B string. And then we're going to play the root note on the 5th fret on the high E string. You could also play the 8 um, on the high E, the minor 3rd. You don't have to, as you're just going up and down it as an exercise. But you could play that if you wanted to uh, just finish the shape off, that's entirely up to you. And as always, I would recommend with playing this along to a metronome or an iReal Pro style backing or something like that, just so that you can get used to playing up and down, you've got the fluidity, you've got the shape completely under your fingers. It's only when you have it completely under your fingers is it something that you can use later on for improvisation or making music. So there is your minor seven flat five in shape one. Let's also have a look at it in shape four, the other critical position on the guitar neck. So in shape four, we're gonna play A12. We're gonna play D13. Uh, I always do that with fingers one and three. Then you're gonna play G12 with the second finger. And then we're gonna play finally B13 uh, again with the fourth finger. That's that voicing. Okay, so that is that shape. Now let's also have a look at the arpeggio, which I'm gonna just play from the root note here. We could play it from the flat five, but I'm gonna start just on the root note. And show you this shape like this, which is highly usable, which sounds pretty cool actually. So we're gonna play A12, A15. We're then gonna play D13, G12, G14, B13. E11 and up to E15. Play that up and down. And that's how it comes out. So these are highly, highly usable in the context. Um, obviously, understanding that context 
There does take a little bit of theory, a little bit of understanding. It doesn't have to be super, super complex or anything like that, but they're highly usable in the right way. If you want to learn more all about that stuff from me, take uh, a little look at my online learning platform, Cutting Edge Guitar, where you will see hundreds and hundreds of lessons all on these kinds of things. And I'd be very happy to see you over there. So subscribe to the channel and uh, drop me a line in the comments, get involved in any amount of conversation, and I will look forward to seeing you in another lesson sometime soon. Take care.